Hello everyone and welcome to this session. My name is Madhavan Sridharan and I am a senior solutions architect with Datastax. Today we are going to talk about how to hook up Stargate with the Datastax Enterprise backend. As we all know, Datastax recently made the general availability of Stargate on December 9th, which is natively available in Datastax Astra. In today's quick session, we are going to see how to leverage Stargate with a Datastax Enterprise 6.8 version. So for that, what do we need? There are a couple ways to get uh, this done. One is using a Docker approach or another one is to use a regular tarball install approach. In today's video, we are going to see how to get this uh, done. So for that, we need a couple things. One is to get the uh, Stargate DSC uh, 6 8 image uh, from the Docker Hub. And then another one is we also need a DSC server. Uh, the latest version on the DSC server is 6.8.7, as you can see as of today. And then with uh, Stargate, we have version 1.0.0. So with that, let's get started. I'm going to also provide uh, a GitHub repository link, which has all the instructions that we need to get this done. And we will see all these things in here. There is also a quick introduction video of what a Stargate is. As we all know, Stargate gives us with a rich API set. It has JSON, REST, GraphQL, and CQL API. Let's go right in. All we need is this Docker Compose YAML file and then this little utility script to start our DSC. So let's see what do we have within that Docker Compose YAML. First off, I have taken the DSC server version 6.8.7, which is the latest one and I'm calling the container name backend one. And I'm actually having two other backends, backend two and backend three with the same DSC 687 version. And what I also have here is the Stargate version that we saw there just a couple moments ago with the Stargate DSC version 1.0.0. Before getting started, we will need to have Docker installed on our machine, and then Docker is up and running. All we need to do here is to get the script started, which is going to start up a single backend for me here with DSC 687, and then also start up Stargate, and then get them hooked up. So let's see what do we have in the script. As I said, it's starting up a uh, DSC 687. I'm only going to start uh, one backend here in my local machine. But the Docker Compose uh, YAML example file has like three backends if you want to leverage that. After this one is started up fine, okay. We are going to go start up Stargate and I am sleeping here to provide enough time for Stargate to start up. And then we are also checking to make, make sure if it's fully up and running. And then I'm also creating a temporary auth token in here, which we will need anyway to interact with uh, Stargate in executing all the APIs. So let's get started. Here is my DSC 687 backend, which is already started. And then the next step, it is also starting my Stargate container. And then it is sleeping for about 60 seconds to see everything is up and running. If you notice your Docker dashboard, you would now see the backend one that we just started. And you will also see the Stargate 
Now we can see both of them are running. It's just waiting to get started fully. And this should be running in no time. What we can also do while this is happening is we can actually inspect uh, the logs for both our back DSE backend as well as our Stargate uh, using this uh, helpful commands. Okay, looks like our Stargate is up and running and we do have an auth token that is ready for us. So as I said, uh, we can inspect the CQL shell in here. I'm getting into my CQL shell, which is the familiar uh, DSE CQL shell. Here are my key spaces. You're good to go. There you go. I have my 687 running, up and running. Let's see what we can do. This is the auth token that we'll be needing uh, to execute uh, all the other API related uh, things with Stargate. Here I have my uh, Postman. It could be your application. It could be your front-end application trying to execute uh, commands or whatnot. Stargate gives us the ability uh, to have all these uh, API feature set, REST document, GraphQL, SQL. I'm not going to go in detail for this session, but just to give a teaser of what is possible with that. Here I have an environment variable where I'm setting a couple variables and parameterizing it. And I'm going to substitute the auth token in here. Hopefully I copied that in full. Or what I can do in here is also execute the auth related REST API, which is going to get me another auth and then store it in my variable. So this is ending with A002 and this is matching here. If I want to go invoke a document API using um, the Postman. So here is my uh, URIs and I'm using a post request in here. And in, in the header, I'm actually using the Cassandra token, which is getting the value from this variable that we just saw in our environment section. Then I'm also passing in a content type of application JSON. And here is the name of the namespace that I want to create. So, so let's go execute it. There you go. It just executed and then created me a namespace called devices. Let's check if we do have this. So we already have the describe key spaces and there you go. I now see the devices namespace, which in SQL term is a key space in here. It automatically created that for me. And then there are also other APIs with, that you can uh, do in here namely to check if the created namespace is available. I'm not passing in anything in here in the body and I'm doing a get request. Yes, we do have the namespace available. So it came back uh, with that one. And if I want to go ahead and then play uh, with that uh, by entering a document structure, as you can see, this is the doc sample document structure that I have. I'm doing a post request in here using the same devices namespace into a collection called inventory. So let's see what happens. I'm doing a post request. What it is doing for me the very first time is, it is actually going in the background, creating me that inventory collection into the devices namespace. And then it also inserted my uh, JSON. And then it came back to me with uh, a unique ID, which is a document ID, which we'll need to retrieve or fetch the document from the database if you need to. So if we go back in here, again, uh, do uh, a describe in here, or better, let's use this. Uh, devices, 
let describe tables and there you go i now have my inventory table created all with the the document api so now if i want to retrieve that document back i'm going to use that document id if i want to fetch that uh, particular document that i just inserted into the dse 687 backend you don't have to memorize this one but this is just for an example if you want to retrieve a particular document from the collection within the device namespace, I would need this document ID. If I want to fetch the uh, all the documents that are available in my collection, I can simply go ahead and then use like this get request. And what I also can do in here is I can selectively pull, add some query parameters where I can pass in some conditions. In here, I'm just passing in like certification type, which is equaling full certification. We only have one record inserted into our table. So it's going to fetch me with that, matching my criteria where the certification type is of full certification. If I don't use anything at all in my query parameters and just uh, retrieve everything in my thing, inventory collection, it's going to get back to me. But I can have other queries and things like that. I was like, go ahead and then get me all the documents matching uh, the condition that I've given here. You can do where predicates. What we can also do is like, I don't want to retrieve all my fields, but only uh, pull a selective set of information you can pass in this field query parameters by giving the field name. So in this case, I only want the connectivity information and I don't want the other items. I can do so as well. So as you can see, I fetch the record from my namespace uh, devices and then collections, uh, the inventory collection. And then it's going to get me only the connectivity information as I have queried for. So we only have one record into that so let's try to do a couple more records. Here is another JSON, which is having a different ID and couple different values. I got a different ID. I'm not going to copy that. I'm going to try and insert another uh, JSON uh, document in here with a different ID and couple different values. There you go. If I want to pull all the my documents from that particular table, I can go ahead and as I said, you can use the same get, a, get request and it's going to get me everything in here. So I can also do a pagination in here. If I restrict it to use just page one, page size of one, um, meaning only pull a single information for me, it's going to get back to me with a page state. It knows that my collection has more than one document stored in it. And then it is actually going to give get back to me with the page state. So if I want to do pagination type activities, I can use the page state and then use the page state that we got back from our earlier request. Let me make sure if I do the proper URL encoding. And this time, if I fetch, as you can see, it fetched me a then my next document with a different ID. And it also gave me another page state because we now have like three documents stored into the, stored into the in our collections inventory. And then it gave me another uh, page state. What I can do is I can use this page state information in my query uh, for the next time and then fetch my other things. We can do all sort of thing. I'm not going to go detail into that. Uh, I'm just going to show you like uh, all these things, like you can have where, where classes and then you can pull in specific things. So for in here, I'm trying to pull all my documents, which has certification type value of full certification. This is equals. And then I'm also adding uh, an approximate cost in here which is greater than one. So it is satisfied uh, two documents in my table and then it fetched. So these are a couple uh, APIs that you can do. As I said, I'm not going to cover uh, in detail just to give you a teaser of what we can do with the uh, Stargate and DSC backend. That's all.
you are up and running with Docker. Now that we have seen how to get up and running with Stargate and a DataStax Enterprise 6.8 backend, we'll now go ahead and then um, stop our uh, containers. As you all know, these are resource intensive. There is yet another approach that one could follow to get and running uh, with Stargate and a DSC 6.8 backend. We can do a tarball approach. For that, what we need to do is, since we have only uh, one IP address in our local machine, if we want to start up another uh, loopback address, our data stacks, Stargate developers have given instructions on how to do so. All we need to do so is to configure an additional loopback for running our uh, Stargate instance with it. That's all for today's session. I hope you all enjoyed it. See you all next time with yet another video. Until then, please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or for any of your other needs. Thank you all.